It is uh, 822. We are here with Dr. Bob Oliveri for a brand new series on nine hidden secrets to uh, why you can't lose weight. And uh, this is the first in a nine week series. And uh, Dr. Bob, fascinating stuff from you as always. Yes, the first series that we're talking about here is the insulin weight loss connection. And we're discussing what insulin is, what it does, how it impacts your weight, some of the tests you can do, and some of the supplements you can take. So we just covered a little bit about why glucose, too high glucose is not very good because it is toxic in your body. But I wanna go through a little bit of digestion review. So we're gonna see how this kind of like influences and impacts your health. Right. So you take food, if, normal digestion consists of taking food into your, into your mouth, you're gonna chew it up a little bit. You're, uh, hopefully you're gonna chew it up properly. Yeah. It's gonna go down to your esophagus, it'll go into your stomach and it will be absorbed into your small intestines. Now in the small intestines, it's really interesting because it's gonna get right directly into your bloodstream and it's gonna go back up into your liver. And in the liver is where uh, a lot of amino acids, vitamins and minerals and essential nutrients, fats and glucose is filtered out. And it's processed there and then it's put back into the blood system. Now, when it's back in the blood system, it can start to go to all the different cells in your body to be able to receive the energy. It's gonna receive the nutrients that it actually needs. So if it's going to skeletal muscle, if it's going to heart muscle, if it's going to um, um, any, any organ in your body that really needs it to be able to survive. So what happens is when it's going around and the, the blood glucose level is, is, is floating around, it's gonna go past your, your pancreas and your pancreas is gonna evaluate the levels of it. So if it's too high, it's gonna secrete insulin to be able to help drive that blood sugar into the cells so the cells can use it for energy and we exist. That's how we actually exist in nature. So where, where is it actually stored is interesting. It's stored actually in the liver it's stored in the skeletal muscles and it's also scored, scored, stored in fat, okay? So this is important because body converts glucose into triglycerides when it's not being used. So when it's not being used, it's getting stored as fat mm -hmm. for, for later use. Right. So when we start talking about blood chemistry and why just looking at simple blood sugar levels really isn't giving a whole big picture, remember, it's being stored as triglycerides. Mm -hmm in your body. So looking at other markers are important. Also, when it's in fat, there's a, there's a hormone called leptin. And leptin is a hormone that's produced in your fat tissue that acts on your brain and it tells your brain, stop eating, you're full. So there can be a dysregulation of leptin production inside there. So you never, people that really are obese many times have a problem with that. The brain is never telling them they're actually full. So that's why they do the stomach stapling to make their stomach smaller so they feel like they're full. Well, yeah, that's one of the, they, that, that, that's really way down the, 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 the logic chain. But mm -hmm. yes, you know, I mean, in all desperation for some people, they have to do that. But, you know, there's so many different steps you can do before that. Yes. So, but as we said earlier, insulin uh, uh, drives the blood sugar into the cells. So how does insulin work to get glucose into the cell? Well, this is a little technical here, but, but, but uh, insulin is a protein hormone. So it can't go directly into any cell. It has to be transported because cells are made up on, on the outer portion of it of fat. So anything that has a hormone that's a fat, such as vitamin D or estrogen or testosterone or cortisol can go right through. Fat goes through fat into the cell. Gotcha. But if you have this fat lining on the outside of it, there's a protective mechanism there. So a protein can't penetrate there. So there's a couple stage processes in order to be able to, for that to actually happen. So the cell uh, must have a receptor on the outside of the cell. So every cell in the body, I don't care, like I said, skeletal muscle or an organ or whatever, has this little receptor on the outside of this cell to be able to allow this, this glucose to be transported in. So what happens is if you eat a meal, you have an increase in blood sugar and too much sugar in the body is toxic. So the body knows it needs to get it into the cells fat cells, liver cells, any of those things. But it needs this insulin to do this. So the pancreas creates, um, uh, creates some insulin, binds to the receptor, and wakes up the inside of the cell. And the inside of the cell has a two-step process, which I'm not gonna bore you to death about, but what it's gonna do is there's is what they call a glut floor receptor that, that, that has to go up to the tip of the cell and allow that insulin in, or blood sugar in. It has to wake up the inside of the cell. Well, if that doesn't happen, really bad things, that blood, that, 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 that sugar to make that cell survive can't get into the cell. And that's when you start to see these changes on your blood sugar levels. That's when it starts to get up because it's staying in the blood, can't get into the cell where it needs mm -hmm. to be used as energy. Bad things start to happen to your body. So 
it, this is important, within the cell, there are mechanisms that do not, uh, that do not need insulin to allow the glucose to get into the cell. They're exercise-induced receptors, GLUT4 receptors. So exercise is so incredibly important. So when your cells aren't working the way they're supposed to be working and the inside isn't allow, uh, allowing the mechanism to allow the glucose in, right. even if you exercise, that very detailed mechanism within the cell isn't needed and it still allows glucose to get into the cell. So it's so incredibly important to do this. And we're not talking about basic going for a stroll walk, which most people are doing. You need to do some high intensity interval training. You need to do some strength training. You need to do some uh, aerobic training where you're getting out of breath and you need to be consistent with this. So if you ha have high blood sugar, or whether you're diabetic or whether you're insulin resistance or you're just borderline on there, you have to exercise every day. You have to do something where you're getting out of breath for at least 20 minutes a day. And get your heart pumping. You have to get your heart pumping, but you're waking up the genetic expression of every single cell in your body to override a mechanism that you're, you're damaging yourself with your diet. So powerful, powerful mechanism of exercise. And it's, you know, you know, you go to your family physician or you come into my office and I tell you diet and exercise is so important. And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, 20 minutes of either strength training, resistive training, or high intensity uh, uh, aerobic exercise, extremely important. We're talking with Dr. Bob Oliveri. It's a brand new series about uh, nine secrets of why you can't lose weight. And uh, we'll get back to Dr. Bob in just a moment here on the program on 98.7 Coast WCZT. Good Tuesday morning. It is uh, 8.46 on your Tuesday. We are speaking with Dr. Bob Oliveri with a brand new series about nine hidden secrets why you can't lose weight. This is uh, week number one of the series. And uh, Dr. Bob, we're about halfway through. Uh, very interesting about how blood sugar and uh, blood you know, sugar that you take in functions and, and makes your body happen and uh, really, really interesting stuff. It is. It's the source of all of our energy, you know, so it's extremely important that we actually, uh, we metabolize that properly and our body uses it the way it's supposed to. It, it, it causes such damage to uh, our health uh, it, when, when we don't manage it properly. So, so what are some of the things that can go wrong when we're not managing it properly? Well, sometimes the person can't produce enough insulin. And if that's the problem, and remember, insulin is the hormone that drives the blood sugar into the cells mm -hmm. so the cells can do what they normally do. Right. Um, so if you, can't, if you can't produce enough insulin, usually what happens with that is that's due to like a type 2 diabetes or a type 1 diabetes or there's actually a problem within the pancreas. Another problem can be a problem with the instant insulin receptors on the cells. We talked about that a little technically, but, but what happens is every cell in the body that needs to produce energy, uh, uh, produce energy has these little receptors on the outer portion of the cells. And sometimes those receptors become resistant to the insulin, so it doesn't allow that, that sugar to get into the cell. So we, we just mentioned that the importance of doing exercise so inside that cell can, can trigger other factors to allow that sugar to actually get, or blood glucose to get into the cell. And one of the other things can be intracellular damage, which we're gonna talk about in future shows, but primarily that's due to certain types of inflammation and certain types of genetic makeups that, that you can look at to, to look at that. So, um, so how does in, in, uh, insulin impact your health? Well, high insulin will increase your blood pressure it will increase cholesterol. It increases your cardiovascular uh, risk uh, dramatically. Um, it will increase any mood disorder. So you're, if you're suffering from anxiety and depression, mm. blood sugar has a huge influence on that. And my friend tells me that all the time. He blames it on his blood sugar. Yeah, but it's it is. bad behavior. Yeah, hangry, right? Yeah. They, they get to be angry mm. and hungry, right? And we're going to talk about that, how that happens. And there's a huge increase in, in cancer. Um, cancer cells feed off of glucose. So if you're mismanaging your glucose, it, uh, it, it's, it's a nightmare for somebody that has cancer. So you gotta really, really pay attention to that. Every cancer patient should have nutritional counseling, every single one. Mm -hmm. um, it increases estrogen in men. So it makes men become a little bit more like women as they start to age. And it increases testosterone in women, which is the number one cause of infertility in women. So if you're getting managed for an infertility problem and you're not really actually looking, again, nutrition is such an in incredibly important portion. I'm talking about biochemistry nutrition. I'm not talking about take vitamin A, take, take vitamin B. Right. I'm talking about like really analyzing all these things. Um, if you have trouble with infertility, you have to pay attention to your diet. Um, it decreases your liver function. So with men and women, 
um, they can't actually clear out the hormones because remember we said that the liver is the filter system for all that and, and it will transfer what, what we really need to get into the blood system and what should be transferred out. It increases inflammatory markers. There is interleukin-6, which is a, a marker that we can look for in, in some of your blood work, which increases cardiovascular disease. Now here's a kicker here. When you're looking at, 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 at um, um, blood glucose, you have to look at what, a, a thing called cortisol. Now we do adrenal stress tests in our office on every person that comes into the office in our Field Great Nate program. But, but cort uh, if you stimulate cortisone, it increases your blood sugar. That's what it does, because cortisol is your stress hormone. So if all of a sudden you're, you're under a little bit of stress, your, your body needs to respond to that, so it needs energy. So it's gonna drive this, the, the sugar into the cells so you have energy to do that. But that's not always a good situation because then it's gonna stimulate the increase of, of insulin. And if you're under stress all the time, you're gonna have a high amount of insulin, high amount of blood sugar, high amount of cortisol, and it becomes a really bad uh, feedback loop. And the last portion is it increases leptin, which leads to leptin resistance, which you can't tell your brain that you're full. You know, so you're always, you're never full. So you just keep on eating because you didn't sustain your brain, uh, your, your stomach, which is signaling to your brain that you're in trouble. Hmm. So there's a road to diabetes and there's four stages of progression that you'll actually get there. And so normal ranges, we're just gonna keep it for your blood sugar level is between 80 and 100, okay? I think they should be a little bit finer, but so of course you need this blood sugar to, to, to uh, uh, function properly and your blood sugar is really bad because of poor diet, lack of exercise and stress. We just said cortisol right. fires those stress hormones. Um, so here's the story. Um, if, if you eat a meal, it stimulates your blood sugar. And let's say it shoots it up above 100, mm -hmm. okay? Your pancreas senses this and it releases insulin to decrease that blood sugar, uh, to deal with the increase of blood sugar. So in a healthy person, that insulin will drive the blood sugar way down below 80 because the insulin comes in and does its job. It's just gonna, it, 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 it senses this high blood sugar and says, well, we gotta drive it down. But it drives it all the way down below 80. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is when the receptors are working well and, and the pancreas is working the way it's supposed to. However, in one of the earlier stages with this, that high insulin will, will lead to lower blood sugar. So when you do blood work, it's gonna look at like a thing called hypoglycemia, meaning you don't have enough blood sugar in your body. Exactly. When you have hypoglycemia, you get very fatigued. But a good sign of hyperglycemia uh, uh, is if you eat a little bit of sugar, you start to feel normal. Mm -hmm. But this is a very, a lot of people, a lot of people see this and say, oh, look, your, your blood sugar is low. That's good. It's not good because it causes tremendous fatigue in somebody. The next progression, if you do some blood work, is this insulin remains high for a period of time, but now these receptors to insulin stop working as well as they're supposed to. But when you get a blood work, there'll be high insulin, but normal blood sugar. But remember, when was the last time you got blood work when somebody ordered insulin? They don't, right? It's not mm -hmm. part of that. So you're looking at your blood sugar and everything looks normal. It's kumbaya, it's wonderful. You got normal blood sugar, but you're on your way to insulin resistance and diabetes because you're just looking at one marker. You can never look at one marker. The two next stages that actually start to go along with this is as, as pancreas produces less insulin to this, you'll have normal insulin, but a little bit increased blood glucose level. And then later on what happens is you start to have decreased insulin and really high glucose level and that's diabetes. So we're gonna talk about some of the things that what you can do to stop those stages because you're fooled early on when you're starting to look at blood work and there's other factors you can look in, in blood work and say, wow, maybe if we looked at these other factors, we could have stopped this diabetes and insulin resistance from occurring. We're speaking with Dr. Bob Oliveri, brand new series about nine hidden secrets why you can't lose weight. We'll have more with Dr. Bob when we continue in the program. If you have any questions, you can call his office at 609-886-8585. Good Tuesday morning. It is uh, 9.08 here on 987 The Coast. Each Tuesday we speak with Dr. Bob Oliveri from our Oliveri Chiropractic. And uh, we're starting a new series uh, today for nine weeks on uh, nine, nine, what is it, nine secrets? Hidden secrets Hidden on secrets. why you can't lose weight. Oh man, fascinating stuff. So uh, where are we at now, Dr. Bob? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the symptoms here. So how can you really tell if there's a problem here? We just talked about the four stages of, of blood sugar levels and sometimes your blood uh, uh, lab testing might fool you a little bit. So how can we tell if there's a problem? Well, number one, you can look at symptoms. Symptoms are not the best way to look at if you have a problem or not, but it's, it's one of the couple things that you can do. So let's say if you eat a meal and you get fatigued, say, what happens if, if, if you're, uh, well, let's just talk about a fatigue level anyway. Right. So if you eat a meal and you get energized after a meal, 
that means you're usually hypoglycemic. It means that you didn't have enough blood sugar there. And usually if you eat something, that sugar goes directly into your blood. And if all of a sudden you start to feel a little bit better, what happens is that, that, that uh, glucose goes into the glycogen and you get easy energy right away. Mm -hmm. And it's an easy step. However, if you eat a meal and you get tired afterward, that's early insulin resistance. That's bad news. Both of them aren't good, mm -hmm. but early insulin resistance is what's leading you, right? That's later on down the line steps towards diabetes here. So glucose, in an early resistance, what happens is glucose starts to turn into triglycerides, which requires a lot of energy for triglycerides now to provide your energy. Mm -hmm. So in order for that transformation to occur, so if the, uh, the glycogen stores are full, your body needs to get rid of some of the toxins um, uh, of the high blood sugar inside there. So it has to actually try to translate energy out of triglycerides and out of fats. A lot of work for your body and your body just gets really fatigued. It requires a lot of energy for you to be able to go ahead and do that. So um, when you start to look at both of those, they both have sugar cravings. But if you eat something and you get energized, it's usually low blood sugar. If you eat something and you get fatigued, it's high blood sugar. What's normal after a meal? Are you not supposed to feel any change? Nothing, in right. You're not supposed to feel anything. Mm -hmm. So if you just don't feel, you know, and that's why the importance of not eating big meals are really, it's extremely important, just many, many meals. So um, if, you, if you're insulin resistant, you eat some sweets, the craving, uh, uh, the craving will remain and you're because your glucose isn't getting into the cells remember it's resistant to get in there mm -hmm. so it's not providing the cells what it actually needs another thing you can do is look at blood uh, chemistry so of course you want to look at a fasting blood chemistry and they usually say anywhere between 80 to 100 is where you really want to be mm -hmm. but if you look at the normal glucose levels, if you go to like LabCorp, it's 65 to 100. That's way too broad. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're down around you know 70, you are hypoglycemic. If you're if you're like that all the time and you're fatigued all the time, you know I used to I used to like the range like 80 to 95. But if we use 80 to 100, that's still okay. That is a narrow range, isn't it? It is. You want to narrow it down. We do that in every single blood chemistry. When somebody goes through our Feel Great Nate program, we do that for every single marker that there is that we take. You know, from triglycerides to cholesterol, we narrow it down into ideal. So, um, so if you're above that, you're insulin resistance. If you're, if you're below that, but you also want to look at cholesterol levels because if you're above 300, you can be insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. If you have high density uh, uh, lipoproteins, the HDL supposedly, you want to be able to have that below 50. But triglycerides is a, are a great, great, great marker because you want to look at the cholesterol triglyceride ratio. You really want to be cholesterol like a, uh, to triglyceride two to one ratio. So I don't really look at the numbers as much as I do ratios. So unfortunately now, anytime somebody's above 200, they're, they're putting on a cholesterol medication, which I'm just, I'm not a fan of that. I don't, I don't think that that's the, the accurate thing. You want to look at the ratio of triglycerides. Now, when it starts to go more one-to-one, -one, cause there are people, let's just say that if you have uh, 200 cholesterol, but you got 200 uh, uh, tr uh, or 180 triglycerides, you need to do something about that. Everything looks good on paper, but that's bad. You're very, very unhealthy with that. Mm -hmm. Another great marker is hemoglobin A1C, which is a three-month marker of how your blood sugar is doing. Glucose varies during the course of the day. Let's say you're, let's say you're going to go get blood work and you do a fasting glucose level. Well, stress stimulates cortisol, which in influences your blood sugar levels. So let's just say that you're pretty stressed out. You're going to go get your blood drawn and you're stressed out. You had a fight with your spouse mm -hmm. and then on the way you, you get in an accident oh, yeah. and then you're afraid of needles. Mm -hmm. So that's going to shoot your blood glucose. Even though you're fasted, it's going to shoot it up. So hemoglobin A1C will look at how that glucose level is over the last three months. Gotcha. And then C-peptide, which is a phenomenal marker, which we order on all of our blood sugar levels, is it, uh, insulin's not a good marker, but C-peptide and insulin both uh, are released at the same time and function in the body very, very similar. So it's a great marker to see how well you're doing. There is a, a third recommendation is do a glucose tolerance test. I was going to go into some detail on how you can do that at home, but we don't have enough time. So what I want you to do is turn to our Facebook page and ask any question that you can possibly ask and I will answer that, I promise you. But my recommendation is get the proper lab test. Number two, look, if you're hypoglycemic, you wanna eat frequently, you wanna plan your meals every two to three hours, and you wanna have small protein-based meals, protein-based, which will not spike your blood sugar. And you wanna look at the hormones of cortisol, glucagon, growth hormones, and other things. We can do that with a saliva test. Again, we do that in Feel Great Nate. 
If you're insulin resistant, you do want to do an elimination diet. You want to get rid of anything that's inflammatory in your body. We'll teach you how to do that on the feelgreatinaidinstitute.com uh, uh, Facebook page. We'll get into detail about that if you would like. We're going to talk about exercise to try to drive that, that uh, blood sugar into the cells. You want to eat high quality, low quantity of food organically. There's some additional testing you want to do with adrenal testing and supplements. We're going to get into a lot of supplements today. I'm not going to do those. Please ask me because it's really important when you're taking supplement to improve your insulin function and not just to drive your blood sugar down. There's a lot of holistic supplements and a lot of drugs out there. Just do that. You don't want to do that. You want your cells to be uh, uh, receptive to insulin and allow them to function better. So we'll provide as much information. I'm only going to answer questions that you ask me on the Facebook page. So it's uh, Feel Great Nate Institute Facebook page. Friend us. And any question that you have about this. Now, Feel Great Nate Institute on Facebook. Right. Okay. Now, if you want to see a... a uh, a repeat of this particular show and all the shows if you go on to 9hiddenweightlosssecrets.com. That's 9hiddenweightlosssecrets.com. These shows are going to be played over again. And if you go on to our Feel Great Nate Institute uh, uh, Facebook page, you can answer, uh, ask any question. So I'm going to try to condense a little bit more information because this is a wealth of information, I can tell you right now. And we kind of went through the recommendations. We kind of rushed through those a little bit. But go back. You can listen to these. And ask the questions. Supplementations are important. We provide some supplementations in our office that are, have all of these. We're, we're going to go through 30 different supplement uh, combinations that you can use. We provide those in our office if you're interested. All right, Dr. Bob Oliveri, always a pleasure. Uh, every Tuesday, we meet with uh, Dr. Bob, and uh, we'll be back with him next week for part two of the nine hidden secrets on why you can't lose weight. The number of the office, once again, is 609 886 8585.